Hello, YouTube viewers. Welcome to my channel, Science to Technology. In today's show, Camera Tuesday, we're going to talk about sodium vapor process or this magical green screen that just came into public consciousness a few months ago. So let's dive deep into it. So this is a, apparently a mystery. I have no idea why Cotterings keeps talking like that. It's a mysterical thing. Uh, it was used in Mary Poppins 1964. It is the most popular, uh, what you call, representation of this technology. It has been used before that, after that, but that is the most popular. So if you ask people, like uh, give an example where we had analog green screen that was like, awesome this is what they're gonna uh, talk about because you can see it has all the colors of the rainbow it has smoke dust stuff and all of this before computers were even invented and it just works it looks so good the masking now you may think they actually went down and painted it which we call a rotoscoping like manually doing that no it was done in camera so it was on a whole another level now people have been trying to do that with uh, blue screen green screen all that jazz it did not work out. This is on a whole another level. So fundamentally speaking, uh, doing translucent stuff, doing dust, uh, smokes and all that, that is like mind boggling. So they did this in 1964. And be mindful, this is so hard to do that even in modern green screening, it's difficult to do. Like people have to spend time post-processing and then doing manual post-processing, then doing some extra processing. Boatload of effort has to go into for this to make good. And this was like, I got this. How? Like, how is that possible? Now, let this be very clear. Uh, the technology was never lost. It was just too cumbersome. That's why people were not using it. And be mindful, there was another picture also, the bird. I have no idea why this is named that. But the bird, you can see uh, when they have a bird scenes, other bird scenes, bird is coming so close and none of the feathers are uh, blown out, which will always happen with blue screen or green screen. It will never look good, right? Here, it's like perfect. And again, released in 1963. I have no idea. Like it took me five minutes to find out and there are a lot of movies that use this. So what is this mystery technology that gives you a green screen effect that is fundamentally better than whatever we have right now? Like fundamentally, let that be very clear. In terms of technological prowess, this is factually better. Like flat out, you can have all the green screen or you just do sodium vapor process and sodium vapor is like which place. Like it's on a whole different level. That's factually true. So what's the science behind it? Well, science is very simple. You, what you want, you want something that is easy to isolate. Let that be very clear. All you want is this to be popped out and you have a mask of the background. That's all you want. That's the only requirement you have. I want this scene and this to be easily selectable, uh, like magic marker tool kind of selectable. So how do you do that? Well, first you need a light source that is monochromatic. Let that be very clear. If you take an incandescent light bulb, it is a very awesome uh, light source because it's a emission through thermal thermal emission basically it glows benefit is you look into the spectrum graph it's very smooth line it has everything compare that to led led is rough because it's actually a blue led uh, that is going both load of energy then phosphor layer is converting whatever else is remaining into other light so it's a very spiky cfl was worst now compare that to uh, sodium sodium is like it's it's even worse it's a literally a laser light it's only monochromatic to 590 nanometers. That's it. It does not have anything other than that. And if you're like, wait, that sounds like a laser. It is. Like practically speaking, its emission is that clean. It's almost laser-like, pure. It has nothing, no green, no, no blue, no red, just this exact wavelength. And in terms of sharpness, it's dead laser-like. It's like, damn, it's sharp. So. So you have something that gives you laser-like quality and it's not very expensive because it was used for uh, street emulation. You can still buy it right now, brand new. So it was a very common technology back then. So you have a light source that is exactly close to nine, uh, 590 nanometer, very precise, very absolute. Then we inter introduce this technology known as diachrotic beam splitter. Now this technology has the mixture of two technology. First is you have a rejector. Uh, basically what you want is rejection of the background the background shall not pass or the light from the background shall not pass and another place where only the uh, background should go so basically you are filtering it so imagine the red one to be the sodium system and blue one to be the full color system now be mindful it's a notch it's not a gate system where it's like okay anything below this wavelength let's say 590 wavelength goes here no no that's why we needed something laser like it only reflects just let's say plus minus a few percent so it would be let's say from 550 nanometers to uh, 6 
10 nanometer only that band is refracted that's why it's it takes out such a small slice of color you will not notice it and human eye is very sloppy because it has three sensors we do not have five five sensors or ten sensors or one very sensitive sensor so we have red blue green so you can mix few colors and your brain will fill in the blanks with other colors so this that's why we from our point of view our brain is trying to oh, i think there is some red here no there is nothing there our brain is trying to fill in the blanks so you have a filter so you have a background you glow the background using these puppies you have a diacritic filter which allows you to two split data path one is a data path that is full color data with rejected data point that rejected goes into another system now you need two recording medium let that be very clear it cannot be done on one camera it cannot be done on one film strip it requires two independent unit and most of them would be synced so like how in the back in the old days when they did not develop a color film so they came up with the simple idea of what if we had three black and white film red blue green it's something like this so you have two uh, film one film is black and white pure uh, color film and another is black and white monochromatic one that monochromatic receives the uh, mask data so uh, generally the easiest way of doing this properly was you have background and then you have your subject and you light the subject with normal light in condensed light and then the background with sodium light and then you have a diacrotic system you have two film synced it must be synced otherwise it will not work that's the science behind it so how does the mechanism of this works now here's the deal uh, film camera we did use it uh, what about digital system now if you're old enough you know digital cameras were not very good at the early stages uh, and because of the megapixel being so low uh, the bare filters in video especially was not working out so people invented other technology known as multi-sensor array like 3 ccd 3 cmos you can still buy this uh, right now and they are the only way we can do 8k broadcast right now so you have red sensor blue sensor green sensor you do not have one black and white sensor and a color filter on top of it which you are debating to get the color out you have three true color channels it's really good scientifically awesome and we used to have this it was very common nowadays uh, still do that but here's the deal this is a patent from two, 2006 basically uh, 2006003382 a one this is a four channel camera setup where you have a beam splitter uh, topology so you have red you have blue and you have green and in the same beam splitter before all these color beam splitter starts you have another beam splitter that is for sodium channel so basically this camera again this is the patent uh, i have told you the patent number you can look into it i do not know which camera actually deployed this or it was just a patent to block another people's but you will have one camera one lens and you will have four channels of digital data so you will have red blue green and then you're gonna have sodium alpha channel so it's a old technology it's like we, we got this we could have done this and uh, <clears throat> how did digital quartering today well again the best way of doing that is you take a color camera and you take a monochromatic camera now be mindful <clears throat> monochromatic camera cannot does not mean you take a camera set it to black and white it has to be black and white what does that mean that it means the sensor no color filter on top if you have a color filter on top it will smudge the result uh, if you want like the best possible you do not put smudge on top of it basically do not remove the black filters now can it be done yeah almost all cinema camera digital cinema camera gives you the option where you can call them up it's like hey uh, for this order can you please make it uh, monochromatic they can do that heck uh, in some scenario it's so popular that companies make it as a standard order uh, right now in um, red cinema lineup red commodo you can just buy monochromatic option so if you have two red commodos one would be monochromatic that will be the alpha channel another would be just your full color so how do you buy the beam splitter beam splitter is a known technology you can just buy it but be mindful it requires complete syncing this is the hard part everything else is easy it's just the fact that you have to sync two camera is very hard why is that well um, <clears throat> the technology that allows you to sync two camera is called genalog not time uh, code time code is just a metadata that is screaming it's useless uh, if you really want to sync something you need what we call genalog genalog basically there would be a master and there would be a student how many student it could be it could be 10 500 does not matter so master will scream take photo now and the moment it says now everybody else takes photo it does not matter what their internal oscillator says how is their temperature and all that nothing it's just one thing so it's like took 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 perfectly sync in negative day you already had that sprockets sprocket holes in uh, in the negative that was the reason for that it's perfectly syncing it here you have to sync it unfortunately the only way you can get it is in cinema cameras or some cheap black magics have that and one uh, basically low cost um, 
पेनासोनिक बॉक्स कैमरा हैज जन लॉक जन लॉक इज अ वेरी एक्सपेंसिव टेक फीचर अगेन इट्स नॉट हार्ड और इलेक्ट्रॉनिकली कॉम्प्लेक्स इज कंपनीज आर लाइक इफ यू गिव दैट फंक्शन इन लोअर लोअर कॉस्ट कैमरा नो बडी विल बाय आवर फ्लैगशिप सो इन दिस सीनरी दे वर यूजिंग जी कैम एंड इफ आई एम नॉट मिस्टेक इन जी कैम डज हैव जन लॉक सो यू सिंक दैट एंड इफ यू डो नॉट सिंक इट वॉट विल हैवन वेल यू विल स्टार्ट ब्लरिंग योर मास्क वेल बी ऑफ सेट so you don't know and background must be illuminated by 589 nanometers exactly now can you use a led wall for that no it has to be exactly this our eyes uh, basically again it has only three sensors and it's not like one uh, super long range sensor so that's why we cannot tell the difference between uh, in, uh, basically rendition of color versus true color so like for example this screen you are seeing so many colors it's not there there is only three colors there red blue green you can f- fake it basically you cannot fake it for diacritic prism that filter requires laser like precision so you have to have a sodium vapor that is illuminating the background and the be- uh, better the separation you have from your background to your subject the better this alpha layer would be so back in the old days they used to have large frames as big as they could make it and they put it as far back as possible and then have subject as close to uh, camera as possible that's how they got to get really good keying effect and uh, his deal if this was done if this was that awesome like back in the old days people were doing it they did not have to worry about black uh, hair and all that why did this technology died out or like people forgot about it well here's the it was hassle i have linked a 15 year old documentary let that be very clear 15 year old documentary from the movie the bird they were talking about this technology and the idea was very simple it's awesome there is no discussion about it it's just so cumbersome and back in that day film camera extra cumbersome unless a, a camera company specifically comes out is like this is it uh i do not see it becoming massively adopted and even in this uh, i could see uh, because be my food more and more companies are experimenting uh, with films like uh, deneve newell is experimenting with infrared imagine he had the same camera but this uh, last type critic was changeable like they are like hey i want ir filter there you put ir ir sensor duh it's like in some scenario what if you want ultraviolet put ir uh, ultraviolet filter ultraviolet there or in this case sodium put sodium there so that would be really awesome other companies have also tried something amazing where they were like shooting in daytime they wanted to make it look like a night time so they had full color image but they also shot in infrared using infrared as base and color as a reference material they have were per- perfectly able to give a feel of night time image while they were shooting everything in daytime it was really clever use and that's why it does not look fake i was like damn so there is a need uh, there is a requirement where you have different color channels and personally i hate uh, any camera that is cinema grade does not have three sensor put three freaking sensor so it was just not worth the hassle having two cameras just not worth the hassle and digital era again a lot of uh, indie films would have loved it they would have done amazing tricks with this but problem was always the same gen lock is not low costly available the cheapest camera that i can think of is a box camera that from panasonic that is micro four third not the latest and greatest but it's like uh, $2000 or some black magic cameras do have like low cost $3000 and gen lock so that's the mechanism side of it and if it sounds cumbersome it is cumbersome like managing two cameras while having a perfect alignment with the uh, one lens yeah that's tedious that's why people have patent on this so what can we expect in the future well here's the reality is uh, led volumes are far more desirable why shiny objects meaning if you have a shiny car and you have a led volume everything on the car is also reflecting that is a desirable thing having a basically perfect isolation of it will create a problem where it, companies will be like hey what if you just throw that away and use that as a reference and then we're going to have cgi artist make everything again same thing was done in the movie uh, the creator where they did not do anything they were just like okay just shoot whatever you are shooting and they just like okay let's cgi replace everything they did that and again it was done even in avengers first movie uh, they were like captain america they had a plate for captain america it was not working they just like okay delete it the whole and they just re- recreated the cgi element so it's one of those things we have reached a point where it's like eh, it was again it was hassle back in the day where we did not had good solution we have learned enough about green screen work around it that we can manage it so it's like eh. and led volumes is far more desirable uh, this is like from 3 and 4 years ago uh, when uh, unreal engine became really good as in real time photo realistic rendering was possible so you can have a full scene rendered out and uh, displayed while you can move camera in real time so this was done and people were like yeah this is exponentially better because again it gives you perfect lighting you do not isolate everything but like you get perfect lighting and again you do not need to isolate because it's a realistic diagram in the background so 
LEDs are far more desirable. And weak link, why uh, again, people will love this technology, people will enjoy it. It's just the problem is monochromatic camera is not very cheap or available. Uh, camera companies do not have this option where you can just like, oh, sensor block, just eat the sensor block, put a monochromatic sensor block. Film cameras do, cheap cameras do not. And uh, even if that issue is not that big of a deal, especially with a high megapixel camera nowadays, gen lock is. Gen lock is really, really rare for no reason other than company be like, if we give this function in low budget camera, nobody will buy our flagship cameras. So that's the whole point. So if somebody desperately needs this uh, isolation and they desire it, they can use it. I could easily see this being used. And why didn't other people see it? They used it. That's, that's why I'm saying I have no idea why the heck, if it took me five to 10 minutes to figure it out to patents and other movies and all that, why the heck they were like, oh, nobody knew how they did this. The technology was lost. It's like, dude, it, multiple movies. Oh, and there's another thing. Uh, in astrophotography, as in like actual astronomy observatory, you must have noticed they have giant telescopes and they have yellow lasers. Yeah, that laser is sodium laser and it glows the sodium that is on the upper atmosphere and that glows. Now here's the deal. You have a glowing object. You do not want glowing objects reflecting back into the telescope. What do you do? Same diacritic filter that they are using. Exact same thing, exact wavelength same thing. It reflects the system, protects the main sensitive sensor and it's like, okay, and what's what about that laser data? That glow star is used for atmospheric correction. So it bounces the secondary mirror, tinka chika. It's like, okay, this is how the atmosphere is like. You counter shake it. So that's how you remove uh, atmospheric simmering from the images. That's done. That's been from 90s. We have this technology. It's not lost. It's never, it's just like too cumbersome. And again, there, people would have loved it. This is awesome. But just like so much hassle where it's like, and again, let me be very clear that uh, tri-sensor system, people would have been sure like short up, take money, short up, take money. I don't care, short up, take money. But it's not like that. It's like, oh, I have to have two cameras perfectly aligned through a tiny beam splitter. It's difficult. So uh, if somebody desperately needs it, they will go through the all the troubles that is needed, but do not keep your hopes high on this. So it's more like, hmm, maybe somebody will do that. And you cannot use LED screens. They're like, what if I have this and have that color? No, beam, uh, diacritic beam splitter will only work if the light is very precise. The spectral quality of that light had to be awesome. Unless you have LEDs that has, like again, there are different uh, LED matrix also. For example, um, Samsung in some of their AMOLED has yellow pixel. So they could design something like this where they have perfect uh, yellow, um, that perfect spectrum emission that can be done or you have to just use true sodium vapor lamp. So this is there. Other than that, you will not see. So do not expect this future to be awesome where we like everything has perfect king. It's too much hassle. Huh? And again, if you want black fire king, that's the only way you can do that. You can have fire, you can have a bit of sodium, you can do that. And be my for Denis Villeneuve did something similar to this for their uh, fireworks that were happening in the GD Prime. So. This was just a presentation. I really wanted to break down the science. It's not a magical system. It's not a lost technology. It's just a ludicrously cumbersome system that nobody truly developed. So that's why we do not have this awesome technology. So this was my presentation on basically a sodium vapor process. Hopefully you guys have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show my extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.